Hi guys, welcome to proteins. So in terms of the specification, you need to be able to draw a single amino acid, which is a monomer from which proteins are made. Okay, so make sure you are aware. So we've got a central carbon, we've got the R group, there are 20 different R groups, we've got the hydrogen, we've got amine group, and we've got carboxyl group. So in terms of the structure of the amino acids, you need to know that amino acid is a monomer uh, which combined to make, to combine with another amino acid to make up a polymer called a polypeptide. The bond present in between those amino acids is called a peptide bond and it's formed by condensation reaction, which is a removal of water. When you're going to find the bond, it's between the carbon atom of one of the amino acids from OH group, from OH from the carboxyl group, and the nitrogen atom of the other amino acids uh, at the place where the hydrogen uh, atom comes from the amino group. So, um, so it's really important that you can draw the uh, condensation of the amino acids because they're asking for this many times. So one more time, we've got the R group, different R, 20 different R groups. So this is the, it could be 20 different uh, chemical groups. Then we've got hydrogen that always stays here. We've got amino group, which is a basic group from which the amino part of uh, the name amino acid is coming from. And carboxyl group, uh, an acidic group, which uh, gives the amino acid the acid part of its name. So formation of polypeptide, po uh, polypeptide bond, as we say, in between uh, uh, nitrogen and carbon. So that part of each of the amino acids will be removed to produce a peptide bond. So peptide bond will be as shown here. So this is the peptide bond uh, between the uh, nitrogen and the carbon. As a product, we've got the dipeptide. So uh, one more time, show you where the, the location of the peptide bond in case uh, the examiner would like you to draw it. So <coughs> polypeptides, okay, comes uh, in terms of the uh, condensation reaction and the structure of the pep uh, of the proteins. It's uh, determined as the primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. So primary structure of the proteins shows you the sequence of amino acids in the polypeptide chain. Those amino acids are joined by peptide bonds. That sequence will determine the final shape and the function of the protein. Proteins shapes is very specific to its function. So here you could think about the enzymes because all enzymes are proteins. So the shape is important because we'll give it a specific shape of the active site. There are different amino acids that allows a limitless number of possible combinations due to the 20 different R groups and any change to its shape will affect its function. And obviously it's determined by the sequence of DNA because the sequence of DNA determines the sequence of mRNA, which affects the obviously codons and codons code for okay. so secondary structure then it's the basic level of protein folding so this is possible thanks to many weak hydrogen bonds and those hydrogen bonds will be found between the carboxyl groups and the amino groups in the polypeptide backbone so what we need to remember is the fact the amino group has hydrogen, so um, it's positive charge, and carboxyl group because of the oxygen negative charge. And the types of this uh, basic level of the folding uh, are divided into alpha helix and beta plate sheets. Tertiary structure then, it's a twisted and folded alpha helix. So it's more complex and has a specific 3D tertiary structure. 
and 3D shape makes each protein specific and allows it to uh, recognize and be recognized by other molecules. They are able to interact with other molecules in the specific way and the structure is maintained by a number of different bonds. And the position of bonds depends on the primary structure of the protein. So we've got peptide bonds as we've seen between the amino acids, hydrogen bonds which came in the secondary structure so uh, they are weak we've got many of those that are easily broken but here are two new bonds we've got ionic bonds and disulfur bonds okay disulfur bonds are the strongest bond and ionic bonds are formed between any carboxyl and amino groups and they are not involved in forming peptide bonds so that's really important but they can be uh, easier broken down than disulfur bonds Right, and finally, quaternary structure. So there are large complex molecules contain a number of individual polypeptide chains linked in many different ways. So remember, anyone will ask you about quaternary structure, you need to say it's a more than one polypeptide chain. Also, what gives them the quaternary structure is the fact that they've got prosthetic group. So it's a non-protein uh, group associated with the molecule. So for example, in the hemoglobin, we've got heme group. And finally, uh, the final version of the protein could be divided into fibrous or globular. So fibrous are any structural proteins and globular are the ones that have got specific functions. So for example, enzymes. So describe the structure of proteins for 5 mark, recalling all of the uh, levels that we described, including the bonds. So there are polymers of amino acids joined by peptide bond, which takes place by condensation reaction. Primary structure, it's the order of amino acids. Secondary, it's the, it's the easy folding due to hi many hydrogen bonds. Tertiary structure will then have hydrogen bonds, ionic bonds, and disulfur bonds, and quaternary, finally, a more than one polypeptide chain. So functions of the proteins then uh, could be enzymes, could be antibodies, transport proteins, or structural proteins. And the test that you use to uh, identify proteins in the food sample, it's called BIRET test. So as the uh, positive results, the pirate right on its own it has a blue color, but if in the solution we've got a presence of peptide bonds, the solution is going to turn purple. So purple is a positive result for the uh, test of pro for proteins. It shows you that the peptide bonds has been uh, detected. Right. And we will be looking at hemoglobin now. So it's a quaternary protein because it's made of four polypeptide chains, as we can see here. Each of those is associated with heme group, and each uh, ferro ions are, are combined with a single. They combine with a single uh, oxygen molecule, so they can carry in total four uh, oxygen molecules. Collagen then, so collagen um, it's found in the jo uh, in the uh, tendons to join muscles to bonds. It's unbranch has an unbranched primary structure, tightly wound secondary structure, and there is a lot of glycine amino acids which help to tighten the packing. Okay, and the tertiary structure is twisted into a second helix, which we can see here on the diagram. And the quaternary structure comes from the fact that there are three polypeptide chain joints uh, in that specific manner. So that's everything for proteins. See you later.